everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson, and thanks for joining us here on Around the Peninsula. Well, I have to say today I'm standing the only place I'd want to be on the peninsula, and that is at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center, where we are whale watching. It is peak whale watch season right now. There's so much activity out here on this beautiful coastline. We're going to share with you some footage that you will have never seen before and meet up with the census takers that are here counting the whales. Let's check it all out. Here with the whale lady, Elisa Schulman Jenniger. Thanks for joining us. Of course, you are in charge of the census that's happening here at PVIC. Mm -hmm. Talk about um, what you do here with the census and the whale count. Well, I direct and coordinate the Gray Whale Census, ACSLA Gray Whale Census and Behavior Project. Been doing that since 1984. And what this is, is citizen science. We have a group of about 70 uh, trained volunteers who come here in shifts from December 1st through May 15th, seven days a week from sunrise to sunset. And our purpose is to count the number of whales that come in close to shore, to track them, to make sure they don't turn around and go the other way, to look at timing and distribution, to count how many calves we see, and also to keep track of the other kinds of marine mammals that come through our area. We're not trying to find out how many gray whales there are in the world because this isn't the right place to do that. A lot of grays travel offshore. But what we do is, this is a long-term project, we're looking at trends over time. So since 1984, we have a whole lot of data collected. And this year in particular is incredible for gray whales. Would you say this is one of the more exciting years you've seen? I mean, already the count is surpassing last year's total count, you said. Oh, yeah. This year we're already at 315 grays. We've had seven today already, and it's surpassing, way surpassing last year's. We have double what we saw at this time last year, and we've already passed up the entire season southbound total of the year before. So it's an amazing year. We had gray whales very, very early, and we're seeing lots of grays early up and down the coast from Monterey down to San Diego. It's very exciting. Now, you mentioned earlier when we started the interview, you were with the ACS, which of course stands for American Cetacean Society, and you're with the LA chapter. Talk about that chapter and if people want to get involved with it. Okay, the LA chapter is based here in Los Angeles, San Pedro area, and we've got people actually from all over who can join our chapter. We have lots of activities that we do. We go on all-day whale watching trips. We have education fairs. And one of our key projects is this Gray Whale Census project because it is the longest-running shore-based gray whale study in the world, which is been made possible because of the dedication of those 70 volunteers of which we have over 15 who have over 10 years of experience but we've also got 15 new people who just joined us this year and got hooked and this is a great opportunity for people particularly if your stomach isn't so great to watch from shore and so you have no problems with seasickness or anything like that we do see a great variety of things we've seen 15 different species of marine mammals including orcas four three or four times just this last week I know. Talk about that orca encounter. The footage is on YouTube. It's spectacular. I mean, it was amazing. When you call yourself, your nickname is the Whale Lady. You can see, I think you're the Whale Whisperer because they were just so many orcas around you when you were out, I guess, off Redondo Beach. Talk about that experience and what was going on. Well, it's amazing. Uh, orcas are my specialty, and I've been studying since 1984 also. And what I do is identify individual killer whales, uh, follow the where they're going and follow their life history. This is for California. If they go up to Alaska, I want to be able to track where they go. We had a couple of families that I'm real familiar with that had come down from Monterey. The CA-51s, which is a mom, her four kids, and her two grandkids. We also had the CA-140s, which is a mom and her two kids. So we had a group of 10 whales that came down here for four days in a row. We saw them three days off this area, and I was able to get on them two different days of those four days they were in Southern California. And it was real exciting because I have followed them for so long and, and CA-51 has been um, identified in California for 20 years now. She's a successful grandma and these are transient killer whales that attack marine mammals. In fact, every day that they've been out here, they have been munching on some of the sea lions and we do have quite a few sea lions out here. So it was extremely exciting to be able to see the same group of orcas and see the calves learning how to be a proper predator and the mother giving them the sea lion, which was then dead, to carry around and practice hitting it so they can learn how to be a good transient killer whale. Where did this passion from you come from? You said you grew up in Long Beach. Have you been watching the whales since you were a little kid? Forever. My parents took me to the ocean when I was about a year and a half old for the first time. And I, they told me to put my hands out and walked into the ocean screaming with delight. <laughs> and they gave me swimming lessons starting that week. Now, as we sit out here on the patio at PVIC, this is such an incredible place to catch the whales. What is it about this location at the Interpretive Center that's ideal? 
Well, this location is absolutely, as you said, ideal. We're about 125 feet above sea level, and we're at a place where the water drops off near shore to some deep water canyons. The killer whales, for example, go up and down the deep water canyon drop off, as do sperm whales and blue whales, which helps contribute to uh, all the different species that we see. Gray whales, we believe, also tend to follow the um, fabometer to follow the, the depth of the water and maybe use that as a key for migration. So it's fantastic because we can get whales as we had just a few minutes ago so close that we can actually hear them blow. On the other hand, there's also whales all the way out at Catalina Island. So the attraction of this spot is because the water does uh, drop off so close to shore, a lot of our whales may be five miles offshore and come in right along our kelp, be kelp beds and then head offshore from here. So it's a fabulous spot and it is open and available to the public and we really welcome all the public's eyes in helping us count the whales. I'm now being joined by Stephanie and Nancy, two veteran whale watchers that have been out here for more than two decades checking the whales out along the coastline. Why do you keep doing this? <laughs> uh, just to see the whales. Um, it's kind of addicting. How about for you? Why have you enjoyed doing this for so many years? Um, same reason. Um, I'm also a birder, so I really love um, nature and looking at both birds and whales. And we bird up here, too, so we check everything out up here. But now you're looking for the big ones. Talk about this year. Lots of activity. It's been very exciting. It has been very exciting this year. In fact, I have a cold today, but I wouldn't dare stay home because we've had so many whales. It's been wonderful. It's been like the old days. We used to have many whales years ago. Now this has been a really great year.